Hi there, this is Eshu. I'm the abbot here at Zen West Buddhist Society. This Living Zen podcast is just one of the many resources we've created at Zen West to make Zen practice and training more available and accessible to people all over the world. Instructional videos, printable resources, and much, much more are also available on our website at www.zenwest.ca. If you're a regular listener, I'd love to hear from you. So please drop me an email at office at zenwest.ca and let me know who you are, how you got started, and what brought you to Zen. Everything we make available in person and online at Zen West is only possible because of the support of our members and associates, people like you. If the efforts of our community are making a difference in your life, I'd like to invite you to show your support and take part in making it happen by becoming an associate or member of the Zen West Sangha. You can do this by clicking the Join Us tab on our website at www.zenwest.ca. Thank you for your support, and thanks for listening. I'd like to begin this evening by acknowledging with gratitude the peoples of this land, um, the the Kwangan and Zenchoten speaking peoples. I am a settler and a colonist and um, am trying to educate myself about what that means and uh, how I can live in a way that's supportive of people that I live with and around. And um, it's woven into my practice. And I'm, I'm not really sure how that will come out, but I, I'm hoping that one day I'll be able to speak about practice from that perspective. Uh, for today, I wanted to talk a bit about, well, what, did it, what does it mean to be a nun or a monk or a priest? Um, I'm not sure that I have any answers, but I've got my experience as a resource uh, just to share with you. And um, I guess just sharing a little bit about about the day-to-day of how practice plays out in my life, which I've probably done before, but here we are. Um, so uh, the um, instruction for this talk is to open your heart and then open your mouth and try to say something that might be relevant to the people in the room. So that kind of makes me laugh because I'm not really a talker. I don't feel that I have um, a a really good grasp of what practice is about. Uh, I do know, though, that it's experiential and that um, having a conceptual grasp of it is not the point. The point is to just do it and see how it plays out in my life. And, um, and one of the parts of practice happens to be giving talks. And this is a, a huge blip on the horizon of my practice. Once a month <laughs> giving a talk and uh, just going through so many layers of um, my defenses and my ideas of who I am in order to try to um, kind of dig down and drag out something that might be of relevance to others. But um, some of the things that I run into are constant backsliding, for instance. Uh, I've made a point of jumping into this practice and going full steam ahead and um, wanting to have a a daily practice for various reasons, um, 
One of them is that I'm, I'm just a calmer, um, nicer person um, when I practice, I think. And I think I'm a better partner. And, um, but having a daily practice has been just a, a really difficult thing to do. And, but one of the things that I've learned about myself is that I have to come at it kind of sideways and not do the Western uh, thing of having a schedule. I've got to be, you know, I've got to have a, you know, a really good solid practice by such and such date, and I'm going to do it by doing blah, 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 a whole list of things. Um, I have to come at it from the perspective that I'm whole and complete right now. And that's just so, just so out of the normal realm of my reality that it kind of shocks me and, and, and makes me stop and realize that um, all sorts of habits of way, ways of attacking life have been um, given to me by my culture, my parents, myself, that are really dysfunctional. And, um, and I'm just really so grateful to let them go. <laughs> Just so happy to be able to hang on to this life raft of, okay, I'm whole and complete just the way I am. And where does that lead me? And one of the things that it's led me to is um, realizing that, yes, I, I do want a meditation practice, and I'm going to do it by gently, gently, gently starting to meditate a couple of minutes a day and um, just gradually let it grow. So much like watering a garden, just, I mean, you never get, well, I do, but one shouldn't or maybe one doesn't need to get mad at plants to make them grow. But, um, you know, you just give them the right conditions. And uh, I think that's, um, been a really fruitful way of holding my practice, like just feed it by making this little space in my day and then, oh, that feels so good. Maybe I can give it a few more minutes a week, a day. I mean, a few more minutes a day this week. And um, gradually, gradually just letting it grow. And so Currently, my mind thinks that I'm about at an hour a day, and when I look at the reality, I am sometimes sitting an hour a day, but sometimes I just need to sleep in, and sometimes I have to get up early um, for whatever meeting or something, and so my practice gets squished into a little corner, Um, but I'm really clear that I want it. It's a part of my life, whether it's five minutes today because I had a meeting or an hour because for some reason I feel rested. um, It's great. I find that I get um, so much more out of it when I'm putting more in. So um, it's with some regret that I have, you know, half-hour days or five-minute days because I know when I come away from, for instance, a seven-day sashin that I've just been so enriched by it and so nourished that um, I always come away thinking, I've got to do more. I've got to do more every day because it's just... It fills me with um, gratitude. It fills me with um, just curiosity. What else can possibly be in this being that I call myself? What what other really strange habits of thought or um, ideas about who I am can I dig out? And uh, I'm I'm just. Um, so I'm, I'm just, I just sit daily with that conundrum of realizing how huge practice is, how deep it can go, 
how grateful I am for it in my life. And yet, what, today was a half-hour morning? Come on. So, but that's my old way of thinking, just sneaking in. And I don't, um, you know, I just, I can notice that and just let it go. And just wake up tomorrow, maybe full of curiosity about what kind of a practice morning it's going to be. And um, one of the things that uh, just nurtures me so much and keeps me going is, for example, this morning, um, I was just going through my normal meditation, um, you know, really focus on posture, Uh, There's a new little tweak that I found out from my mom, and I'm practicing that, and having, um, and I've started doing yoga daily, and just bringing that sense of total acceptance, because I do yin-style yoga, or restorative yoga, uh, total sense of acceptance into my posture, and... um, just be there in my body. and um, So I do that for a while, and then I realize that I'm breathing, and I get, oh, into the, just the beauty of breathing in and breathing out. So simple. That's all I need to do. Just breathe in and breathe out. And... Um, this is all separate from the part of me who knows I'm a settler and a colonist, the part of me who wants to be an activist and is still figuring out how to weave that into my practice. Um, the part of me who thinks that, well, this is really fine, but I'm a privileged white person um, living with no problems about money, um, no, no big problems in my life. How can I just sit here being so grateful and just breathe, but I have to just know that that's totally okay. There are times in my life when I've been an activist. There are times when I've been arrested. There are there's a, a, you know, there's a time for everything. And it, so in, in the middle of my practice, I'm going, yes, this is, it's okay to do this. I'm allowed to do this. I must do this. It's, um, it really is for the greater good. Um, and then... I had an experience this morning of um, just one of these flashes of, like everything I've talked about up till now, I think, has just been in the basic realm of mindfulness. This is, these are the really yummy things that you can get out of being mindful, of paying attention, of being in the moment. And, um, and then every once in a while I get a flash of, wow, there's really something else going on as well. It's like uh, Eshu says that it's, you, take your, you take mindfulness as your starting point and then you just take this huge leap into the unknown. And um, every once in a while I just get just a flash of what that might, part of what that might involve. And uh, so this, for this morning, this little gift, a gem for me, was... Um, <laughs> and hard to put in words, but it was an experience of, for instance, and all these cliches come up, but it it was like, <laughs> so so when I'm attacking my day, I, I do I attack my day. Like I I get up and I don't want to get up. I'm tired and and I I notice that I just take on this weight of my day. Somehow it's onerous and it's difficult and I've got to go to work and I've got to 
you know, be nice to people there, and um, I can't be myself, and I, I live with a wonderful partner, and I, I have to be in the same house with them, and really I'm a hermit, and I should be off in a cave somewhere. And I, so there's all these things that go on in my mind that are just habitual kind of, this is me taking up the load, <laughs> which is so just ironic, to be taking up this load of difficulty when my life is really so simple but and easy and anyway so i take up this load of difficulty and, and this morning i just saw it i saw myself picking it up putting it on and uh it was like you know it was like storm clouds like my it's seeing that my the way i attack my life is through this storm cloud and seeing it just lift it just lifted and it it was gone and there was all this light and lightness and i saw i had an experience of i could have my life just the way it is and i didn't have to pick up that load that storm cloud that aggressive and yet, invisible, mostly invisible to me, attitude towards my life, just for a flash. And then it was gone. And everything after that, that I thought about it, was me conceptualizing it and holding on to it and wanting it back and, and now talking about it. But I, you know, I'm talking about it in, in, with this sense of, well, This is what's going on. This is what it is to be a junior priest, (laughs) to be a junior priest with uh, Zen West. Anyway, I've talked beyond my time. Thank you all. Thanks for listening to the Living Zen Podcast. If you follow Living Zen through iTunes, I would very much appreciate it if you would take a moment to let me know what you think about it by rating or reviewing the podcast so that new listeners can also hear what you have to say. Thank you for your time and for your support.